Everybody's being forgotten When everybody's tired of being alone Yeah, everybody's being abandoned I left a little empty-handed So if you're out there barely hanging on I love finding unique anthems, those that don't fit into the stereotypical shows that we see every season. I just wanted to give you something different, something unpredictable, something bizarre. And well, our own Penguin Drum is perhaps one of the greatest examples of this I've found recently. It's a story about life and death and fate and destiny and, of course, penguins. It is certainly not something ordinary, and that's why I want to present it to you today. So, get ready for my review of Mararu Penguin Drum. This is going to be fun. The story of Penguin Drum is what makes it stand out so much. It is filled with a lot of plot twists and mystery and surprises that it can be quite hard to follow and even really hard to explain to someone. Especially for me to explain it in a way that you would appreciate it, I'd either have to A, lie to you, or B, spoil some major plot points. So keep that in mind, let's talk about episode 1. The first episode introduces us to our three main characters, two brothers, Shoma and Kamba, and their younger sister, Himari. Himari just recently got out of the hospital. The fact that she's even still alive, a miracle. So, to celebrate, the three of them decided to go to the zoo where Himari passes out and dies. But then she's revived by the power of a penguin hat that she bought at the zoo. The magic hat possesses Himari and then instructs the brothers to find the penguin drum if they want her to continue living. I would say that all of this eventually makes sense, but that's really not the way Penguin Drum handles things. Through the brothers' quest for the Penguin Drum, they meet a girl by the name of Ringo, and the plot then expands to her and her family and then their story. These various stories really do intertwine in a very fascinating way. The story, though, isn't just about what the characters are going through. It's also about their past and an event 16 years ago that is still affecting their lives even today. These various stories are oftentimes told through flashbacks, something that did get annoying at times, especially when a great deal of time was spent on a side character I really didn't care about. Still, these backstories really did bring the characters to life and it was able to effectively tell both the story of the past and the present and how they come together. The story is very unpredictable, especially during the show's second half. It is here that we see what the characters are truly after and the extremes some of them are willing to go to in order to obtain their goals. This unpredictability is really the show's greatest strength. But at the same time, it also leads to some of the show's weaknesses. As I've said before, the story can be difficult to follow, and while it does explain most things, there are some times where it's something that happens which is never really fully explained. It's also a story filled with symbols, some of which just seem to be there without much reason. There are also a number of supernatural elements to the show, which are added in such a way that they didn't overpower the plot, something which was good, but at the same time, the magic seemed to work without any reason or laws behind it. I also have to talk about the show's ending briefly, which really wasn't what I expected, but at the same time, it felt very fitty and was incredibly powerful. It is bizarre, out there, and I really would expect nothing less from a show like this. Really, the plot of Penguin Drop is unique and something very refreshing to see and something I wish I could see more often. Unfortunately, there aren't many shows like Penguin Drop, but that's what makes it so good. It's something different, something that really stands out. Despite the insanity of the plot, I think the show's greatest strength is its character. It really makes them stand out is the fact that all of them have a past they're either trying to escape from or reclaim. They're also all emotionally broken in one way or another. Most of the characters lie somewhere between good and evil, carrying the role of villain at least for a small portion of the show. The first of the main characters is Kamba. He is a 16-year-old who is one of the three siblings. He sees himself as the one who has to keep his family together. He cares for Shoma and Himari greatly, and it is this love that is his defining trait. He is willing to go to any means necessary to save Himari, abandoning other morals that he would otherwise hold. Shoma is the other brother, also 16 years old. He is a main character through most of the story, though we really don't learn much about who he is until the end. Like Kanba, he cares deeply for his family and wants to help Himari, though isn't willing to go to the same extremes and prefers to take the more moral options. He is also haunted by his past, because everything that happens around him is some sort of divine punishment. The show really does a good job of making me more root for him, especially as it seems like despite his best efforts, nothing he does seems to make a difference. Himari is the youngest of the three and is the simplest of the characters. She doesn't have any complicated goals or desires, but simply wants her family and those around her to be happy. Of course, fate decides that things can't be that simple for her, as her illness leaves her dead on multiple occasions. She too has a past filled with regrets, but she is better than most characters, able to keep moving toward despite the things that if she could, she'd probably end up changing. There are a number of other side characters I could get into, but I'll just leave it here for now. Just know that all the characters are a little bit messed up because of what's happened to them in the past, and it's this messed up brokenness that really brings them to life. 
Although there were times when the show wanted to focus on a side character where I really didn't care about them and would have preferred them to get back to the main story of Shoma and uh, Himari and Kampa. I also have to make note of the penguins, who I'm sure you've noticed through these clips. It saddens me to say this, but they were largely pointless. They were mostly there for comic relief, but they could have been taken out and very little would have been lost. Their existence wasn't really even explained. Sure, you could say that they were symbolic, reflecting the characters they accompany, but even so, I wanted more for them. I wanted them to have a more concrete role in addition to everything else. If so, then they could have been a great addition to the show. As it was, they were pretty bland. Overall, though, this was a great cast, and it was great getting to see how the characters fought their past to challenge fate. There weren't really any typical archetypes to be found here, something that is really good to see in anime. The animation of the show was very hit or miss for me. At first glance, it looks pretty good. All the animation is really fluid, and the character designs I thought were really great. There are times, though, where the animation style shifts to something different, something that seems to be more symbolic. If you're familiar with Studio Shaft, you know how they sometimes do this, and it seems to be very similar here. At times, this can really enhance the scene, really bring out what they want to show, bring out the emotions, but it can also be a distraction to what's going on. There's also the fact that Batman characters weren't animated, they are just black and white figures moving along the screen. This seemed very jarring to me. I do admit though there are a couple scenes where this lends itself well to what they wanted to show, but I think it hurt the show more than helped it. There were also times where a character was slightly in the background so their face wasn't shown or anime, which really felt off to me. Of course, there was a lot to like about the animation. Humorous transformation sequence has to be the highlight of the show. I don't care that they reused her several times throughout this series, I got excited whenever I'd hear her shout, survival strategy. It's just there's so many different colors and lights which made a great experience, and the music really was just so much fun. Speaking of music, the soundtrack here really didn't have that much to stand out on its own. The word excelled was how well it was placed within the show to truly enhance the emotions of whatever scene was playing. And really, since that's the main purpose of the soundtrack, it did its job very well. Both of the openings were very similar in tone, they were fitting for the show, and I enjoyed both the visuals and the music. Though I really didn't care for the vocalist. I felt like it wouldn't bear if they had a stronger voice singing, but really, other than that, it was great. On the subject of sub versus dub, this is a show where I'd have to say I prefer the sub. When I first started the show, I watched the first episode subbed, and then watched the first episode dubbed, and I found the dub just had a few things that didn't sound quite right. If I got used to it more, this would probably change, but based on how I heard, the Japanese dub is what I enjoy more. Although the dub really wasn't that bad. Mararu Penguin Run will certainly fill that craving for something unique. It's a show where you'll need to pay attention and probably won't understand everything after just one watch, but if you're okay with it, then this is probably an anime for you. However, I must make note that there's some romantic elements in here that could be disturbing to some viewers, and I can't really tell you what they are without spoiling more than I'd like, so just know that some things might come as a surprise to you that you would rather not have. I really did enjoy this anime though. I had really high expectations coming into it, and despite the few complaints I have, I'd say that these expectations were largely met. So, with all that being said, I've calculated the scores for story, characters, animation, sound, and my own enjoyment. Story receives a score of an 8.3 for a complicated, if not confusing, plot. Characters receive a score of an 8.2 for a cast with an overall good depth. Animation sound receives a score of a 7.4. And lastly, Enjoyment receives a score of an 8.3. Take the average of all four of these together gives Mario Penguin an overall score of an 8.05 with an overall rating of worth watching. This really is a show that any anime fan should check out, especially if they are looking for something weird and different. If you enjoy Penguin Drum, I would also point you toward FLCL as that show does not like making sense that often. I would also point you toward Drara as that is also a show with a complicated cast and lots of intertwined stories that come together in a great way. That is everything for me today. I hope you enjoyed this review, and please leave suggestions for what I should review next. I'm planning on my next anime review being of something that's currently airing, so if you have any of those you'd like for me to review, please leave those in the comments, and I'll decide what I'm going to do. Alright, thank you very much, and I will see you next time.